back all my DIY nomads. I hope all of you are doing really, really well today. Now, my electric system. Um, as you've seen from previous videos before, I've tried to explain how I've laid it out and everything. But there's a couple of things that are a bit more in-depth and a bit trickier to explain, and that's stuff like wire gauges. I'm going to explain to all these little different things today, um, but also I'm going to be doing some changes as well. So I finally went out and got a um, 12 volt distribution board. So basically I put this on the wall and these two ports down here, they're the positive in bits. And um, I just strap my battery directly to this, these points. And then I've got up to 12 sort of accessories I can attach. And all of these are fused ports. So these are all fused 12 volt distribution ports. Here's my negative port up the top here. So I can take everything out, bring everything back into these ports up here and uh, complete that circuit. Really, really neat, really simple. Even, even comes with like a little cover case. My issue is with this case is that it's not great from the fact that you have to like put it in and then turn this round to close it on. But you have to have tiny, tiny, tiny weeny fingers to get that in there. And then to undo it, you almost need pliers. <laughs> it's really tricky. And also, um, one thing I would have really liked this kit to include is like a uh, like a join a join bar thing, so that you can combine it. Because these basically these are com these are on their own, separate from these lot. So if you have one cable from your battery going to here, you're going to have to join these over to have access to all of these. I don't know why they've done that. I would quite like to know why they've done that. So basically we were midway through doing the roof rack, as you saw from the previous video, and I thought I'd take this opportunity while the solar panels are off to basically take off all the ports and connections and everything like that in the electrical system, swap over this bad boy, and then that also gave me an opportunity to talk about wire gauges and other stuff like that because I've had quite a few questions about it. Um, it is a really tricky subject, I'm not gonna lie. There are lots and lots, lots, and lots of information online. It, not, it doesn't always seem to like correspond with each other, so who do you go for? Where do you wanna know your information from? It does get tricky, so I'll try and cover that in the best way I can today. Oh my god, guys! I have just rewired the uh, the setup in the back here using that distribution board. How have I not got one so far? Are you ready for some serious OCD level curing? Oh, look at that! Oh, so you've got all the power cables coming in here, all the positives here, you've got all the negatives here, and then we've just got negative to the earth here. We've got a negative running to the negative port on the battery, and the only other one is going out to the inverter, the inverter, and the positive goes into the bottom there. And I've looped it over with a small bit of cable because I've got the CTEC power coming through. So basically what I've done is, because I haven't even used up all the ports on the right here, I thought I'd use this as my power in. So that is in, from the battery, power out, from the CTEC, power in to the battery. So this is it. Bef this is it after, right? I'm going to hover over a picture of it before, and oh, look at that! What a difference that makes, doesn't it? That is uber satisfying. I've also got another treat for you guys. I installed the vent, ah! So now my inverter can breathe and everything can stay cool, ah! Ladies and gentlemen, DIY nomads everywhere, I'm going to quickly talk to you about wire gauges. And before I do, I'm going to do a little safety announcement in that I am not a qualified electrician, so you should definitely get all your electrical advice from a qualified electrician instead of listening to some weird rambling YouTuber. Wires come in so many different uh, variants. You get like very thick to very thin. This is the usually the, the gauge. Um, they come in different amounts of strands, which is how many um, little like strands you have inside. This one has seven, whereas this one has bloody hundreds. Um, and there's there's many different aspects to cables. Um, this one meter one is very thick because it was used for an inverter that was one meter away from the power source. Whereas if it was if the inverter was close to the battery, I could get away with a thinner cable. Um, so we've got strands, material, length to play with, all this sort of stuff. So I'll just, I'm going to try and keep this really quick and simple um, without overloading you. To start off with, you have AWG or millimeter squared. Um, AWG is more American, whereas millimeter squared is like, you know, it's an imperial metric sort of thing. They basically represent the thicknesses of the wires. So in AWG land, 
Um, one would be very, very thick cable, whereas 40 would be very, very thin. And in millimeters squared, one would be very, very thin and 40 would be very, very thick. Obviously it also, as I mentioned before, strands. This one has seven, whereas this one has hundreds. Um, I would personally advise you use a higher strand count in your wire in a camper van thing because even you can pin your wires down loads but there's still vibration you can still get movement and you want like a more flexible cable because otherwise over time this more stiff stuff could uh, bend and stress fracture and then you've got a dud cable somewhere right guys i'm gonna keep this short and sweet in the description below i've set a link to basically a calculator that should help you find the right correct wire size um, if you follow that and scroll down, you'll see a very basic sort of online calculator. Um, if you were to choose, basically, I, I would set it at 2%, um, and then obviously the voltage is 12. And let's use this, let's use an example that I found online. So um, some st LED strip lighting that I had, I looked at the facts and figures, and five meters of it would run at two amps. So if we put two amps in here, and the length of cable from the battery to the LED strip light was about three meters. So if we put that in and calculate, it gives us a cable size of 1.5 millimeters squared or 17 AWG. I would actually say running 16 AWG or maybe even 14 AWG would probably be the best option anyway. Uh, ramping it up uh, just is, is like ramping up a little bit is good for the cable anyway because then it's not running at its absolute max. Um, they probably already built that into this calculator, uh, so this cable probably would be fine, but personally I just would run it a little bit higher. Let's do another example. For instance, if you were just to ramp up the amps to 5 amps, and as you can see there, it ramps it up to a 13 AWG or 2.5 millimeters squared. These calculators are really useful. Um, they're really great online. You can use these to really do most of the work for you. Now the reason I say take this with a pinch of salt is because um, as you just saw there, that cable was rated, it said in brackets to the side, I think it said up to 17 amps. Now, I would run a similar cable for the fridge, but my fridge runs on a 30 amp fuse. So this is where it gets a bit tricky because you want your cable rating, your amperage of your cable rating to be higher than that of the fuse so that the cable doesn't burn out, um, so, that, so that the fuse burns out before the cable burns out. With those stats in three meters away, if I was to run 12 AWG cable, the actual rating of the cable itself runs at near, well, based on that calculator, it says 41 amps. So with my 30 amp fuse for the fridge in there, um, my fridge, my my fridge, my fridge's fuse is gonna burn out before the cable does, and that's important to help prevent anything like fires. You can also use this calculator for stuff like working out the thickness of the cable needed to go to the inverter. If we were to take an inverter that was running at 1500 watts, that would give us, at uh, 12 volts, that would give us a uh, amp like requirement of 125 amps. So if you were to put that into the calculator, you end up needing a 25 millimeter squared cable, which is a much, much, much thicker cable, um, exactly like you see in my system based on half a meter length that is sorry that's with a change in length as well if it was longer it would dramatically increase in size which is why you want to keep the inverter near the battery so that it's not too close that it's unsafe but close enough so that the cables aren't horrendously thick you could also go as far as using an ac calculator to um, work out the correct cable size that you need for the um, 240 volt plug sockets you're going to use for instance, in my van, I've actually just taken a, a double socket extension cable I had lying around, taken off the end, taken the cable and used that. Um, it's rated plenty for what I was using it for. One other thing I'm gonna leave you guys with before I lose all of the light outside is that bunching cables together, you're gonna to have a situation probably most likely in your van where you have quite a few cables running together in the same direction. Make sure that you remember that when you have lots of cables running together in a small area, um, they're gonna generate more heat. Uh, you need to have good ventilation around those cables. And in some cases, you might even need a higher gauge of wire if there's lots of them running next to each other and it's the high amp demand. But as I said before, I feel like I'm not too qualified to give really in-depth information like this. So please check all of the data that you get with an electrician. Um, I would love to hear anyone else's input. I've probably forgotten something. 
So if something's bugging you that I've left out or I've made a mistake somewhere, please point it out. And to everyone watching this, read the comments below as well because all of you guys have such great tips. And um, the last thing I want to do is endanger someone. So uh, please take all of this as a warning. And all I have to say is thank you so much for watching and I'll catch all of you guys hopefully on Thursday. Mm -hmm.